Uh, thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to speak to you all today. Uh, I'm Ken Bradley with the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Office of External Affairs. I'll be providing you an update to the updated 2019 National Emergency Communications Plan. So just a quick overview of the NECP. It is the nation's plan on emergency communications. It is not DHS's plan, it is the nation's plan. It was developed by stakeholders for the uh, emergency communications uh, community. Uh, the NECP is uh, mandated that we, we produce the document. Um, we uh, did the first plan in 2008, uh, the first update in 2014, and we just released uh, the latest iteration in September. So the 2019 plan is online and you can download it right away. Uh, the plan is designated uh, guidance uh, for those that are in the emergency communications uh, community to invest, coordinate, plan, uh, kind of lays out what we should be doing at the nationwide level. Uh, the NACP aligns with the safe common interoperability continuum and we'll be touching some of those points later in the in the presentation. But also the, the, uh, the point of the plan is really to get uh, everyone that's working in emergency communications to be using the same terminology and to uh, get to the desired same end, end point. So how did we develop the plan? Uh, this was almost a two-year iteration of working with public safety agencies. Uh, we worked with over 3,500 individuals on this plan from public safety, NGOs, um, cybersecurity experts, emergency managers, uh, tribal, state, local, federal, to make sure that this was an all-encompassing plan for emergency communications. So there are three um, priorities in the NECP. Uh, the first one is really to get that effective governance across all the partners, making sure everyone is there working together at the table. Uh, the second one addresses interoperability challenges, really those new technologies, cybersecurity, NG901, broadband technologies. Uh, and then the third one is making sure that it's resilient. So adding that resilience goal, risk, uh, risk mitigation on the cyber end, and uh, making sure that you're not open to threats and vulnerabilities. Um, we'll touch later on all the, the six goals of the plan which were updated, but I really just want to show this one for the vision. Uh, it is really to enable the nation's emergency response community to communicate and share information securely across communications technologies in real time, including all levels of government, jurisdictions, disciplines, organizations, and citizens impacted by any threats or hazards uh, events. Um, how do we do this? We do this through the emergency communications ecosystem, which was um, introduced in the last iteration of the plan in 2014. Uh, the graphic's been um, redesigned to really show that whole community approach. So you can see everyone in the middle there. Um, but again, public interaction, uh, reporting uh, for requests of, uh, for assistance, uh, alerts, warnings, and notifications, and incident coordination and response. Uh, again, all disciplines are located there in the middle to show the full the full uh, whole community approach that the ecosystem entails. Uh, the first goal uh, really addresses governance, which again, we're following the, the lanes of the SafeCom um, interoperability continuum. So governance really is making sure that everyone is there at the table. Um, you're working across technology, making sure you have your 911, your broadband folks, um, and your LMR, traditional communications there, and that they're working together. But you're also bringing together um, some of your NGOs, your rural communities. It's not just the cities that are involved in these plans. Uh, you need to make sure that you have tribal representation, you have your emergency emergency managers, of course, should be playing uh, along and uh, involving your cybersecurity professionals, a whole community approach for that governance. Uh, the second goal addresses planning and procedures. So making sure that you're emphasizing um, periodic updates. Again, this is the nation's plan on emergency communications. All 56 states and territories have a statewide interoperability communications plan. States also have regional plans and TICPs. So we want to make sure that you're following and including those uh, in the national plan as you kind of trickle, trickle down. Uh, but really promoting that risk reduction and strategies on those managements for implementing, implementing these plans. And over the next five years we'll be working with public safety to implement this nationwide plan. 
So, and how do you do that? You do that through training, exercises, and education. So really emphasizing that you need to be using your communications and be practicing before the incident occurs so that you're working together and coordinating with those that are all involved in that incident response. Uh, addressing any gaps in the trainings and exercises with these new technologies that are emerging. emerging. Again, 911 is transi transitioning to NG911. We know there's a lot of investment and changes there. Um, exercises in uh, training and education Again, educating those folks that these new technologies involve uh, new trainings and procedures for, for those. Goal four. Uh, it really addresses that communications coordination we kind of mentioned earlier. That's that whole community approach, getting everybody involved um, in that incident response. It's not just uh, the public calling for help and the responders coming to the incident. Um, there's emergency managers that are involved much more in uh, emergency technologies uh, and that coordination piece uh, today. Uh, it's also getting a lot of more information from social media uh, to coordinate in response. We're seeing that in text to 911 as it's going across the nation. Goal five is uh, technology and in infrastructure. Again, most of the other um, goals are addressing the people, the human factors. Um, we all know as we new and technologies are improving, um, all, all day the technology is the technology, but it's the human um, factors on the, across the other lanes. If you don't have the other lanes filled out of the interoperability continuum, the technology that you have doesn't matter. If you haven't have a governance group to come together and establish uh, SOPs, you haven't trained on it, you don't know who needs to be involved, uh, the technology might not work. So you need to make sure that you're following these as we're investing in NG911, cybersecurity, broadband activities, um, FirstNet, the nation nationwide public safety broadband network. Last goal is that resilience goal on cybersecurity. This is really what's new to the plan is making sure that you're emphasizing that you're setting public safety specific cybersecurity standards. You're following that NIST um, framework. Um, I hope everybody has gone to NIST's uh, website and seen the new cybersecurity uh, framework that you should be implementing, but this plan encompasses our uh, agency partners over at NIST to make sure that we're following that as well. And again, it's uh, a lot of that education and outreach on cybersecurity. I know it's a, a big buzzword, but you really need to make sure it's plan, a part of your plans as well. And really just uh, got our contact information up here. It's uh, CISA or NECP at CISA.DHS.gov if you've got more questions. Uh, we have a new website, so CISA.gov slash NECP. Um, you can download the fact sheet, the plan itself, and we have a lot of different resources for public safety communities. Great. Great. Thank you, guys.